Hello everyone, my name is Katie Zircone, MC name Orna. I'm an artist, writer, curator, spiritual gangsta. I was born in California, but I'm currently based in New York City, where I am faculty at the School of Visual Arts in the Critical and Visual Studies Department. Um, and yeah, I'm here today and I'm thrilled to announce that I am a special consultant for the Beam Studio Pro Metaverse Design Contest. Um, and I'm really happy to be here today. Yeah, so words that come to mind are unpredictable, expansive, and ethereal. I feel like there's so much potential in the metaverse, in the crypto world, especially for artists to really um, get involved and shine in a world that sort of, you know, tech kind of lacks that creativity at times. Um, but I also feel like there's so many unknowns and it's such an early stage that there's like also misinformation and confusion and even, you know, um, like mistruth circulating around. So I do think it's a bit unpredictable, but in that same sense, there's so much potential for this huge expansion and this kind of renaissance of creativity. Um, ethereal, you know, I thought of using like a word like magical, but I really see the internet as this sort of ether. It's like this invisible network, this invisible web that ties us all together. But things that I that come to mind that I see as like trending or sort of in the collective consciousness, one is like kind of ghetto gothic or minimalist aesthetic, um, cyberpunk. Like I feel like there's a lot of these hybrid worlds that are colliding. So sort of ghetto gothic, cyberpunk, things that we might think might be sort of at the opposite ends of the spectrum, they're coming together in new, new ways, new aesthetics. Um, androgyny uh, is really important, um, I think, right now to this sort of frontier of digital space. Um, and personally, I, I would love to support, you know, people that are really doing things differently and thinking outside the box, including black creators, you know, female, non-binary, queer folks. And just people that are really here to um, create a shift in consciousness that will benefit the planet. Yes, I'm definitely a maximalist when it comes to color. Um, you know, but as, as, as I get older at the same time, I realize that sometimes, you know, you need like that white background, right? To really have, like, if you really love hot pink, it might be better on a white background than like, you know, an explosion of color, but I think both are awesome. And I think for me, it's really about letting your personal creative vision flow through you, kind of surrendering to it, not trying to control it too much, really learning to like listen and allow things to emerge. I think that's like how I try to approach my art, you know, and, not having too many rules like once we learn the fundamentals the color wheel things like that then really um you know surrendering to that creative flow is where we find something that's really innovative and really fresh i don't feel like i'm a person that ever feels blocked creatively because i i try to think in terms of the long term and like not expecting myself to produce all the time. I think that's really important. Like riding that wave of creative energy, I feel like it's very powerful. Um, you know, and one thing I'm really grateful for is how much creative control I maintain over my work as an individual artist, as someone who really feels like I'm the generative artist of most of the things that I make. Um, and on the flip side of that, I think like a sort of bottleneck experience is when our work is sort of reflecting something back that makes us uncomfortable or makes us see ourselves. Like, I love having full creative control at the same time, you know, that means I bring all of my baggage into my work sometimes. So sometimes I look back and I'm like, whoa, or even, you know, looking at your work, sort of seeing these uncomfortable things about yourself. I love this concept of like, 
you know, working with the shadow concept, letting it hang out. There's this collective catharsis happening when we really tell our story honestly. Um, but sometimes that sort of can marginalize us or we take on these identities where the black sheep or too heavy, we don't fit in. Um, so sort of, I think that can be the bottleneck for me is like when we really see ourselves and we have to process and digest the work that also takes time, you know, when we're really working at, at the edge, sometimes we have to be sensitive to our own needs. I've had a few people even sort of ask me about the contest and I've learned, you know, that this whole world is coming up where now, like, you know, if you design in fashion, you actually might adapt your practice to be designing for the metaverse, to be designing like virtual clothes. And just the idea that that's like a sort of viable career tra trajectory is kind of amazing to me and also novel and feels a bit like some people would take that risk, sometimes not. Um, I think in other ways, like we're already so immersed between social media and email and the apps, like we're already living out these lives as, as like virtual avatars of ourselves um, or using filters, using different apparatus to kind of create our identities. And a lot of, a lot is happening online. You know, sometimes the, the bulk of our social interaction happens in those spaces. Um, so I think they're very distinct, but remain interconnected. And as an artist, you know, I've always been a bit suspicious about online. I've noticed um, that it does have physiological effects when we're only limiting, you know, interactions to social media. But I also have always felt this sort of power that I had, like as a creative person to kind of um generate an audience that was my own in that space and like I was always just so good at kind of creating um that distinct identity that in some ways it feels like more true to who I am than maybe who I show up as on a day-to-day -day. um but again I think there's dangers in that and like even the cyberpunk genre or a lot of the like um science fiction movies and novels that have come out speak to the sort of dangers of being in a virtual world, whether that's being disembodied or, you know, identifying with these sort of standards of perfection that are beyond nature. Um, I think there's also a lot of space to work with it in a healthy way, you know, I hope. 